Okay, saved by the bell. All right, all right. Six, me <laughs> six, six melee damage. Give me this joust lance. Give me these knives. Give me this luck. I'm buying it all. You know what? Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Today we're going to do a full D5 run through clearing guide with one of the more challenging characters in the game, the arms dealer. Now, if you're watching this, you likely understand this is a difficult potato. Not one of the easier ones, and I certainly would rank this as one of the harder characters in the game. Uh, the arms dealer signature mechanic is you lose all your weapons at the end of every single wave. Uh, so you kind of have to purchase weapons and figure out what you're doing on the fly. Uh, to offset that really big disadvantage, you start with a really impressive 30 harvesting. Um, you get a free roll in every shop. You get a really impressive 33% increase in your damage modifications, which is extremely good. Um, but again, you sort of have to figure out your weapons every single wave, which is, uh, is easier said than done. Um, that said, I do think there are some sort of mechanics that we can use to our advantage in order to uh, turn this pretty difficult character into one that we can consistently win with. So we're going to talk through all the tricks that I know in order to make this character a little easier. Um, I like to play this character as melee. I do think you can play as ranged, and I don't know if melee is like flat better than ranged, but I do think melee is pretty strong on this character, and there are a few reasons, and we'll talk about why. Um, range in Brotato is generally a better option. Range is better in top-down roguelites, uh, top-down bullet hells, because you have more room to maneuver, you have more room to dodge. Um, range is good. Melee tends to be worse because you have less room to operate, uh, etc., etc. However, in this character, I do like melee, in the sense there is a pretty big advantage to melee in this game, which is it kills uh, bosses and elites uh, more efficiently and quicker than um, uh, range does. Usually. I mean, obviously it depends on your build to an extent. Um, Another thing I like about melee is, you know, it just seems to have like a similar-ish attack pattern. You know, the big outliers on melee weapons are jousting lances and spears because they attack in sort of a, um, you know, straight out motion. But most melee weapons in Brotato kind of like swing. Uh, so they're somewhat easy to sort of mix and match. Whereas range weapons, I'm playing pretty differently if I'm playing laser guns versus SMG shredders versus uh, slingshots, just in terms of like how I'm building my character and how I'm thinking about the wave. Whereas melee, I can just kind of Huck it and chuck it. And I do like being able to deal with those bosses and uh, at least a little more efficiently, which I think are the more challenging parts of this game, um, especially for this character. So again, we really want to take advantage of that 33% damage modifier. I think that is sort of the key to this character. The way this character is clearly designed is that, you know, we're supposed to uh, get that plus damage and really use that to help us sort of ameliorate the downsides of you know, having uh, bad weapons, right? Because we're gonna roll into a wave, we're gonna have gray weapons, blue weapons, epic weapons, like even pretty far into the game. Um, and like the increased damage that you get, that bonus is supposed to sort of make up for the fact that you're gonna be using bad weapons. Um, but you do have to think about this character a little differently. It basically takes all the lessons we learn from the other characters and it chucks them out the window, right? Like specializing on weapons, upgrading them throughout the wave. It really uh, alters sort of the mechanics of getting stronger compared to other characters. Um, so again, all things to think about, and there are a few more tricks we're going to discuss now you can make this character a little easier uh, as we get to them, you know, when they come up. You can see here in these early waves, like I mix and match uh, ranged and, and melee, but as we start to pull away in melee, uh, I will go ahead and likely start focusing more on that. So really happy to see a spear. Um, Cacti Club, uh, that's quite good. Medical Saw, I do think that's one of the uh, stronger melee weapons, so happy to see that. I will be greedy and take a third gentle alien. You may not want to do that at home, um, but I do think it's relatively good. Um, you know, I think that that will allow us to start to snowball. But you can see three blue weapons here. That should be more than enough to uh, handle this wave. But uh, as we start getting into the harder waves, like starting around wave seven, eight, you know, it will definitely make it a bit of a priority uh, to have more full sets of weapons. That said, you're still going to run into waves on like waves 10, 11, 12, 15, 17, maybe even the bosses were like, you know, you don't have a full set of weapons, which is kind of fun, but also kind of terrifying. So that's just how this character works. Um, but like I said, we're going to be doing some things to emulate the RNG. You'll see we're picking up a lot of luck. Luck is one of the most important uh, uh, attributes on this character. You need luck. And the reason is we re-roll a lot more in this character than we do on others, right? We're always looking for more weapons. So every time we re-roll is, is a chance for that luck to fire. That said, I'm not going to pass up an epic armor. So we go ahead and take the hammer, <clears throat> hammer there, pardon me. Uh, that we held on to uh, last wave. And again, roll on wave six, we'll go ahead and, and get a full slew of weapons. Um, again, really happy to see luck. Now there is something we're gonna do here, which I think will uh, really be helpful moving forward, is we wanna be sure, as we get to the harder parts of the game, to lock a weapon. And I think this is sort of the hidden trick of this character. If we lock a weapon we like, 
before we uh, head into the wave. We're guaranteed to see that at the start of the next shop. And it's a really good way to sort of mitigate that RNG that you're gonna run into uh, when playing this character. The way this character loses most consistently is you get to a difficult wave, you get further in the game, and then you go and you're feeling good, you're crushing everything, and then you get to a boss or just a hard wave and like the shop only spits out ranged weapons for you and all your damage is in melee. Um, locking a weapon type that you know we can use really uh, helps dampen down that RNG that we face when we're in that situation. So as we sort of progress, um, pardon me, through the games and get to the harder waves, you'll notice that's a strategy that I'm really gonna be utilizing and as we we're unable to kill the uh, crate carrier. But again, really happy with this, even though we do have positive regen because I really wanna get that melee damage as sky high as possible, as quickly uh, as possible. So I am looking for melee damage. We do find it, again, getting it up as fast as we can because we uh, have that hatchet. We know we have this weapon coming up. Uh, again, like the metal, like the beanie, although I do want to get a little more range. Love the medical saw. Uh, again, we reroll a lot in this character, so I will happily take a bunny. Uh, and I do like broken mouth, but I think we're okay to pass them for now. Then we'll go ahead and grab a flint. Um, don't really think we need a spicy sauce. Uh, and we'll grab a thief dagger, giving us a good slew of weapons for what is pretty challenging wave, which is wave seven. And again, normally I don't love Duncan crit for melee, but this melee increased damage is at 33% more, so that's actually 40. And again, really happy to see these items, which we'll go ahead and just hang on to uh, for next wave. So that's a perfect example, right? I saw two good items in the shop, I hung on to them, and uh, I know they're gonna be there to make that wave eight, which can be a relatively challenging wave, uh, nice and easy for us, because we uh, held them in the shop. Now, uh, other thing to keep in mind is there are times, like if I have an elite, that I may even hold like a really good item um, three or four times, right? Like as in if I know, if I'm on wave 10, I, I, we got a tough lead at wave 12, and like there's a really good epic, uh, rare, legendary item, whatever in the shop, I might actually just hold on to that for several waves in order to deal with that challenge uh, that I know is coming. So you can keep you can keep a weapon lock for like three or four waves. You probably won't want to do that much, um, but just know like that is a strategy that I do, do utilize. And you may end up wanting to do so here. I was not able to kill uh, that uh, alien just yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and just ignore him and go ahead and focus on some of the other things. But you can see, you know, we we're getting. I think we actually got a, you know two uh, attack speed bonus uh, off those ghost weapons, which I do think uh, is kind of a fun benefit of using them. So with five speed, I'm very tempted by this speed, but I do just like crank and percent damage, which again is a 33% bonus, and uh, I do like to get a little life steal online. So again, we got this really good jousting lance here, and same with this. Uh, uh, Dagger, uh, Thief Dagger, so really happy to see that. I do want a little bit um, of range. I don't like being negative range, and I do like the tractor. Um, again, harvesting is very, very strong on this character, and I would highly recommend uh, you invest in harvesting. Um, the reality is, is the more money you have, the more you're able to ameliorate the RNG of this character. Uh, basically, uh, the more rerolls you have, the more money you have, the more chances you have to like not get stuck with terrible weapons. So I do think uh, going harvesting, just like luck, you have to on this character. If you, if you want to win consistently, that is. I'm not saying it's impossible to win without I'm just saying like if you want to win at a good clip, uh, you will want to invest in harvesting. You will want to invest in luck. And both those stats will really increase your chances of success because you'll have more money, you'll see more weapons. Those weapons you see will be a, a, a greater rarity, um, which will just help you not get got. Now here, uh, this is a challenging wave. I mean, wave 12, I think is, or sorry, wave eight, uh, where the uh, bruiser enemy type, which are the guys that are charging us, starts appearing uh, in large numbers. Uh, it's pretty hard. I mean, this this is just a hard wave for melee because you usually don't have enough defense uh, to kind of get up and close and personal yet. And you don't have enough uh, offense to really blow them up yet. Although we actually are doing pretty well here. I think that's all that armor that we got. Uh, we got really good uh, armor to start. You know, I don't mind taking an early landmine, even when we don't have engineering. Uh, it's only seven materials, for so sure. But really happy to see uh, some melee damage here. Uh, again, we were unable to lock that last wave, so hopefully it doesn't uh, bias the rear. You can see we're offered an epic weapon, but it is uh, not in the weapon type that we want. Uh, so I am going to take that ghost flint. Uh, let's be greedy and take another gentle alien. Um, really happy to see a crown, a coupon, uh, and a chopper, and a hatchet. So we're going to keep buying these melee weapons. Scissors, happy to see. Uh, really do love community support. I will lock that. And again, uh, this wave nine is obviously well known for uh, being a whole bunch of horde uh, enemies. And so I'll go ahead and take the circular saw and we'll lock the spear. Uh, really do like the melee damage there. I'm really happy to see that community support, which I think will make this a pretty easy run. Um, but again, just showing through the mechanics of how you can win with arms dealer relatively easily. Although, like I said, uh, you, you, you are gonna run the runs where it's just like you just you just get got at the wrong time. So I uh, do know that is a possibility. Um, but we'll see if we can make this work. I feel pretty good about where we are especially with that community support on deck and having good armor, um, we'll be all right. 
But again, uh, run through this uh, this wave here. This is obviously the, the infamous wave where it's not actually over wave. But wave nine is a lot of fun because you get a lot of like super tiny enemies thrown at you, um, and you just sort of buzz saw them down. Uh, if you really want to do like an edge case uh, sort of way to make this character more efficient, I wouldn't like sweat about this, but this is just me. I'm bringing in like weird game theory. And I do think on Ghost, or sorry, on uh, on Arms Dealer, it could be worth potentially hanging on to. Uh, some ghost weapons specifically for this wave because again those uh, buffs you get from ghost weapons even though you lose the weapons they stay in your stat sheet and so they are buffs and i just think uh, a wave like this where you can really take advantage of ghost weapons could be worth it if you can see we got five staff five attack speed just from one ghost point and that's going to ca uh, carry with us for the rest of the run i uh, don't want a pumpkin uh always happy with a uh, other armor again we're not going elemental so no sausage um again looking for uh, percent damage. So melee damage or percent damage just because we do get that at a better clip. And again, I will go ahead and take some armor here. Really happy the community support. And again, the spear that we locked uh, is quite good. But I'm actually going to... Oh boy, this is going to be a crazy run. I uh, got a magical leaf. Love to see that. Um, so I'm looking for pretty much any other melee weapon. Um, oh my gosh, we're just getting tractor. So originally, I was going to save that spear uh, for uh, the 11 elite, but it, you know we just got some other items thrown at us. That made that not possible and so again i kind of put myself in a difficult spot um because we don't have that good weapon so again i was trying to do a couple things there in that last wave uh was basically trying to uh re-roll us some more medium good weapons in order to save this really valuable epic spear uh for the uh, elite but uh we were offered a really good epic uh as well as some uh, really good items the tractor with the crown is extremely extremely strong so i did not want to give that up and sort of change my calculus at the last moment but um you know, I may have end up regretting spending, uh, getting around that spear because I was unable to lock a good weapon, uh, which is extra, extra important uh, when you're going into an elite. So basically the wave before, a real, you know, an elite or a horde wave, you do want to, you know, think a little bit more about saving one of those weapons. But, you know, I may be punished for that. We'll see. In terms of uh, harvesting, we're doing very good. Melee damage, we're doing all right. I mean, 38 melee damage for a general character is pretty damn strong for this uh, spot. Um, you know, obviously we got that damage increase. Uh, getting 33% more. So, you know, I'd say we're doing good, but uh, we're not like rolling over the wave. Uh, I do like sometimes taking the landmines from crates just because before wave 10, they actually are able to one shot the weakest enemy typically. So it can just be like a way to get a little damage going around. I'm not going to engineering. Again, really, really like harvest, but like six melee damage. Yeah, I'll take that. I uh, don't really want range. And again, I'm going melee. Okay, saved by the belt. Power Fist, one of the best melee weapons. Really happy to see that. Claw Tree Tractor. Uh, again, uh, like the sunglasses, but um, I really, really do like Vigilante Ring, but we just need some melee. Primitive, which I don't love. Hatchet. Um, we'll take some luck. So again, really try Ghost uh, ghost Axe. Happy to see that. So I would have purged that. Okay, here we go. Whew, saved. That's pretty good. Uh, and again, I'm not going to save a screwdriver. Uh, I do want to take this Vigilante Ring. I do think it's worth hanging on to, because again, with our buff, that's 4% damage per wave. I do think we were able to sort of uh, cobble together by the skin of our teeth enough weapons here to take this monk out. Uh, that said, I don't have overwhelming DPS, so I will sort of spend uh, spend some time killing the eggs before switching my focus to the boss. And again, that power fist is going to be really good for keeping these pursuers, which are the armored enemies, uh, kind of at bay as I take some avoidable damage by running directly into the boss, like you should not do. Um, but alas, um, I do think the monk is actually the more most challenging elite um, now with the patch change you can see that new sort of attack pattern on the ground it can be pretty pretty difficult to sort of dodge around but i think we'll be able to take them out as we just did and i feel pretty good about things i think uh if we can get through that wave 11 leap we're in good shape to sort of uh, go ahead and demolish this run uh, especially with an early leap which that's one of the earlier leaps i've ever gotten which again is a reminder that's giving us max hp regen uh as well as uh life and life steal every single turn and previously our life steal i think was a pretty big weakness in this character and we just didn't have a lot going so that's definitely helping quite a bit but i feel really good about this uh, run's chances and uh i think we'll get there that said i'm gonna keep talking through mechanics helping you understand how you can win with arms dealer and again we'll just talk about the uh mechanics general okay all right all right you know i truly i truly upload these runs and tell them to be guides okay i'm trying to help you but they just sometimes uh, come together in a way that just makes me laugh because I think this is about to get pretty damn busted. Uh, 10 melee damage, which has now increased to 66. I don't want a metal detector. Oh, man, that's hilarious. And again, we'll go ahead and crank damage. Uh, we do have enough range where I will take uh, a really valuable blindfold, um, but I would like to get maybe a little more. So we're going on uh, knives this, this run. Again, I want luck. Um, Uh, I like again, you know, it's like I try to do these runs, but okay, yeah, we'll we'll take another another tractor. Uh, why not? 
Uh, shuriken and scales off melee. Um, I don't think we need a bean teacher, uh, but I will take that. Um, you know, lightning ship does scale off elementals. So we'll take it and we'll lock that. But I, I may have wanted to uh, hold on to a weapon. However, we're, we're not going into a, uh, a difficult. I'm just laughing. You know, sometimes the runs just come together, and like, geez, this is this is gonna blow pretty pretty bonkers. But we're gonna play as if uh, you know it's a tight run. Uh, but I do think we're gonna get very good uh, very quickly uh, from this point. But um, you know, again, arms dealer, challenging character. Hopefully, this will help you understand. But let's see what wild stuff we can do uh, this run. Because I feel like I could probably break this pretty hard. So we'll see if we can do that. Because I do think we've sort of covered a lot of the basics. Again, really getting harvesting, so you can see more weapons. Really getting luck, so the weapons you see are better quality. Really getting, uh, really taking your time to lock weapons that you can use before difficult fights um, or difficult horde waves, um, so you don't get stuck with no weapons. Not being afraid to just hang on to a weapon, you know, for. Two or three ways if you have a pretty difficult difficult one coming up um so there's a lot that you can do i think to help um arms dealer but you know tough tough character there's definitely some sort of rng uh bad beats you can you can do and a reminder even though they do uh act as a ranged weapon these shurikens do scale off melee damage yeah never another damage funny pretty good you know we're we do have seven range um that's uh, i don't think it's worth the 50 percent range penalty you know a range penalty on range is ironically enough a lot better or a lot easier to deal with than a range penalty on a melee character because if your sort of attack swing is too low, uh, like it's too tight in, like it's really, really hard to hit things. Um, happy with the mouse because I feel like we're, we're strong enough to deal with it. Give me a little crit, uh, but again, looking for, I mean, I don't really like torches. Uh, chopper, uh, half a little muscly dude. Uh, we're going to an okay wave, uh, horde wave, but really happy to see that rip and tear, which will help quite a bit. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, lock the middle plate, lock the repost, and lock the chopper, just so I know I've got a good, uh, decent-ish weapon as we head into uh, the horde wave, which will be the, uh, the next wave. Uh, happy to see a rip and tear there. Uh, that obviously creates an explosion based off your melee uh, damage whenever an enemy dies. I don't think that's as good as like people initially think, in the sense it's not baby in a beard, right? It's not an insane item, but it does have some uses. Uh, it does help your RNG a little bit. And the key thing about that is the dynamite item as well as the uh, plastic explosives do actually make it more effective, as does the explosive uh, weapon attack, so, which increases your total explosion size. So there are ways that you can sort of improve its uh, benefit. Where I think it's really good is if you get an uh, item like Cyberwall or um, Lucky Elephant, it's a really good item to uh, sort of explode random enemies because it will trigger, you know, you don't have to be, you don't have to kill an enemy with melee for that item to trigger. Uh, you just have to have it die. So if you can get some way uh, to cause like random enemies around the map to die, uh, I do think it can be really, really strong, and you can then start off like chain reactions of explosions as one enemy killing the random part of the map, kills another enemy which explodes. So I do think there's some pretty cool things you can deal with it, even if it's not like as immediately as OP as a bullet with a baby, or baby with a beard. Obviously not engineering, don't want any of that. I'm feeling the lack of speed at the moment, so I, I would really like some of that, but I'm not gonna turn away. Six, me <laughs> six, six melee damage. Uh, yeah, give me a gnome, why not? 10 more melee damage? Why not? 101 melee damage? Why not? Um, don't really want to, even though I desperately want speed, I don't want to go too much in the negative range. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll take the Flaming Brass Knuckles, which actually, even though they do elemental damage, uh, are the same item as the Fist. Um, don't think the wolf head's worth it. Don't want to go Torture. Really happy to see. Uh, not going to take the bait. Take the bait, you know, with this uh, Horde Wave coming up. Um, eh. Keep you rolling here. Uh, really happy with the ritual, and again, we'll go ahead and I think I think knife is a pretty decent weapon on this character, so I'll go ahead and lock lock that. Uh, I was looking for a little range or a little speed, which I did not see. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and lock that knife, um, so we have a good weapon to start next time. I really, really would like a little bit of range, more importantly, some more speed. I mean, we are just so slow. So you can see a random enemy died there. I do the one of our effects and then exploded, uh, which is pretty neat. So the big thing I'm sort of worried about is we don't have a lot of great AOE, and this wave. Uh, 14 horde wave is pretty tough because of these wizards. I mean, the wizards are the hard hard enemies to deal with in wave 14, wave 15, because they kind of fly around the map. And if you don't have enough defense, it's really easy to get overwhelmed by all these orbs that sort of start going around the map. Um, so just something to keep in mind. But I do think we'll be okay. It's just, you know, with our uh, regen and our lifesteal really starting to climb, uh, thanks to that leaf, uh, we are just gonna, we're gonna be all right. But it, again, you do wanna be a little bit careful in this wave. Uh, it really, you know, sometimes in this wave, you just really need to stop attacking and just like focus on dodging, right? Like because these little orbs, I'm pointing at the screens if you can see me, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, are, are do become somewhat difficult to dodge. Um, 
you know, you just need to be careful. You don't get overwhelmed with those. And again, we've got a uh, couple alien babies and some uh, mice in our kit. So, you know, it's uh, we, we have a lot of folks, uh, a lot of things going on. But you can see, just insane, uh, insane sort of clear there. Again, really like exoskeleton. Uh, five armor is going to help a lot, as is uh, speed and crit. Obviously, the engineering doesn't do much. And I still don't like alien baby. It's not that good of an item. Um, looking for uh, either melee damage or speed. Happy to see that melee damage there. Again, we'll start off with knife with so much life steal. I'm happy to take a bean teacher. Uh, yeah, we'll go knives. I think we're in a pretty good, uh, pretty good spot here. Give me another knife. Um, give me a spear. Give me this. Give me this. Um, I do, I do need more speed, but we just, we need some range, man. We gotta get some range. There gotta be some out there. This will help us really stomp, uh, which I'm happy to see. That'll be good. Get us back to positive range. Um, and yeah, give me some wings. Again, speed and range, which I'm really happy to see. Uh, we could potentially even take the Cyclops Worm after that. I think that'll be pretty strong. Uh, I'll toss one reroll. You know, not the sexiest weapon, but it's a melee weapon. Uh, so we'll take it. So as a reminder, the way tags work in this game is if you have a weapon uh, that has an item tag, which you will be see here, either precise, uh, gun, range, whatever, um, you do have an increased chance of seeing those items in the shop. And that's sort of how tags work, which is why when you play engineer and you start with wrenches, you see a lot more wrenches than if you're not playing engineer, is because the uh, game is rewarding you for having that weapon type um, so you can see more weapons of that weapon type. It's an important thing to understand on this character, right? You know, that's why locking a good weapon is so important, is so you have a much better chance on rerolls to see more items than uh, that would help you. But, um, yeah, I, I don't necessarily love like locking a primitive type. Uh, I think Medieval is one of the best tags. Precise is one of the best tags in terms of tags that I want to sort of help uh, by this character. Obviously, Precise with some good crit allows you to just insanely scale melee and like wreck bosses. Uh, Medieval has some really, really powerful weapons in its tag, like the Jousting Lance, like the Night Sword, um, and it gives you a really good uh, tag bonus of armor and dodge. So, you know, there's some good tags. Primitive, uh, not so much. I mean, it's really good if you're ranged because Sling is primitive, but uh, we are not. You know, at this point in the game, uh, I don't think we need much more harvesting. Uh, but again, give me melee damage. And again, I'm really, really happy to see speed. We are behind on speed. We'll take the wings. Uh, with that additional range, I am comfortable taking Cyclops Worm, which again gives us 33% more damage. And we'll go ahead and take that Cacti Club. And I guess we go uh, more Cacti Club. We, we do have a little bit of range damage from some of our items. Man, love a mastery. Yeah, give me that mastery, man. 125 melee damage. And you know what? We're just going to be cac Cactus. We're going to be in Arizona this build. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we'll be all right. Uh, again, really like this Jousting Lance, really like another Cactus. You know, this isn't that hard of a wave, so I'm actually going to uh, go ahead and uh, lock this Jousting Lance so we have it um, for next wave. And again, like the Dynamite uh, with that Rip and Tear and grab another Bunny, use our free reroll. We'll take the lock. And I don't think the Pruners are quite good enough to, to uh, hold on to. But because we have so much damage, why not take a little more? Why, why not take a little cake? It's the Arms Dealer's birthday, and we want to <laughs> we want to be uh, nice and strong. Um, so yes, I do think this run is getting to the point of cruise control. So like I said, when I do have a cruise control run, I just try to do weird stuff. Let's see if we can really break this and uh, demolish these bosses. Um, but yeah, here I am running around with a little nomad on my birthday. I eat my birthday cake. So having a good time. Um, but yeah, so you can see these uh, have the primitive and heavy tags. Heavy tag is pretty good. You know, it gives you plus flat percent damage bonus. Uh, that is really nice. Uh, however, the primitive tag, like I said, not a whole lot of great melee weapons. Uh, although slings are primitive and are one of the best weapons in the game. Um, so something to keep in mind, but um, You know with that range damage and we took a lot of items like big arms that do have sort of uh, tertiary range damage These cactuses are actually pretty damn strong and uh, you know Be happy to take any cactuses going forward that said you know, even though I am playing in somewhat autopilot at this point I do want to be sure not to let myself get uh, just insta killed because you know always possible to get person down even with uh, sort of a robust amount of health um, It is hard in this game to scale yourself to be so strong that you can tank uh, bosses and, and hits Although, uh, you can you can get there. Again, no, love another six melee damage. Uh, that's what I like to see. And we'll start playing a little, little more defensively, so I'm happy to see a, a legendary dodge there. Again, I really like luck. Sure, we'll take the bait. Take the bait. Do I want the double bait? Uh, I'll have a little bit of, a little bit of bait restraint. Um, don't think we need another bean teacher. Happy with the lightning shit, even though it's not that great. Cocktail of sort of stats. Give me another jousting lance. Take a fist. All right, and again, at this point, um, I hate to lose the percent damage here. But we have enough, and I think the luck will continue to uh, benefit us more. And so at this point, I'm looking for a good weapon to sort of lock. Uh, we'll go ahead and hell octopus. You just we're not getting okay. There we go. Jousting lance. We'll go ahead and hang on to that. The next wave because we want a good item at this point. We want a good weapon so I can go ahead and take out that elite on wave 18 relatively uh, painlessly. And I think with that jousting lance, we'll do it again. Jousting lance, one of the new items in the game, and, and one of my favorite items. I do think 
Uh, this was the best weapon. I ranked it as the highest weapon in my uh, items ranking guide um, in the new patch. Uh, so the best weapon in the new patch. It's just fun. It's a fun weapon to play with. And uh, it sort of shows the game sort of exploring spaces that it hasn't really explored yet. So I do think it's cool. You know, it scales off the speed. It's the only weapon in the game that scales off the speed. It has a both a bonus in speed damage and penalty and redu reduction of damage when you're standing still that scale with the weapon. So the penalty gets more severe, but the bonus gets stronger. I think that's really cool. I think that's really fun. I'm excited to see them kind of push out some more uh, new and fun uh, scaling uh, different things. You know, the nice thing about speed is like you pretty much always want more speed. I mean, at a certain point it becomes like hard to aim, but like speed's something you want anyway. So I do think putting an item like the Joust and Lance that scales off of it is neat. Plus it has a two times crit modifier and uh, it looks cool. Uh, well, and more importantly than looking cool is it's got a nice sort of attack uh, range where you can really um, uh, hit a lot of enemies. So it, it, it acts like a spear, which again, I think is one of the better. Better eyes. I mean, what, what we can say at this point, right? Like, hello, thank you, come again. I mean, geez, Louise, another big arms. I mean, we're getting just insanely powerful here. 148 mana damage. Um, got enough crit where, like, I'm happy with the octopus, even though I think at this point, who cares? Give me this joust lance. Give me these knives. Give me this luck. I'm buying it all. You know what? Extra stomach, not going to do anything. I almost want to buy it anyway, but I will buy another community support. Uh, chopper, eh, let's chop it up, right? Like, let's chop, chop, chop. Um, Go hang on that jousting lance for the next wave, but give me a ritual. I want more percent damage. And we do have another free roll. All right. Uh, since we're facing an elite now, um, probably, I'll go ahead and buy a Jousting Lance. And we'll, we'll save these epic weapons for next time. But we're going to demolish this elite. Where is he? Where is he? Hey, Rhino. What's going on? Welcome. I'm the arms dealer. You may have seen me in my Nicolas Cage rendition of my favorite movie. But yeah, I mean, to get a, uh, whew, a nine second elite kill on arms dealer, pretty challenging. So uh, really, really kind of showing this pop off. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to focus on making jokes and uh, making the rest of the run entertaining as we are just uh, stomping, um, stomping this through. And the uh, best part is we, we even do it in style, right? Like a little gnome hat. <laughs> hey, little gnome hat. Uh, how you doing? Um, little elf. Little arms. We're the arms dealer elf, uh, which is kind of fun um, to think about. You know, we are sort of uh, <laughs> our mustache and our elf, go elf hat going on at the same time. I mean, if you don't like that, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but you can see, you know, just the power of the Jousting Lance. I do think the Jousting Lance, we already talked about a bit, but it's just, it's a good item, a good weapon specifically for killing elites as well. High base damage, high crit damage, uh, scales off a couple different things. So I do like running into those before the elite. So we will certainly be going for a boss kill uh, here. You know, I almost don't want more range. I think this is sort of medium, but uh, we'll take it. Again, I really like that crit chance. And again, another... Uh, eight whopping melee damage. Let's keep that crit chance. I do want to try to reduce my range a bit. We have enough armor where I can get to 59 crit chance. Feel good. We will take both of these. Vigilante wave with one more, one more wave to trigger uh, is not worth it. So I'll pass on that. Anvil. <laughs> uh, Anvil does nothing if you're arms dealer, right? Like you have no weapons when you enter a shop. So uh, I would not buy that if uh, I were you. But, you know, uh, I am not the master of the world. However, that would be my good advice. I'm pretty confident we're going to clear this wave regardless. So uh, I'm happy to kind of uh, leave that jousting lance there. I mean, that, that is something I'm happy to do because I know that's going to give me a really, really good uh, item. And we'll go ahead and leave that sword. And, you know, and we'll go ahead and take that knife. Um, we'll leave that knife there as well. Um, this is going to be a good, a good set of weapons uh, to kill the final two bosses. So again, just showing that, you know, we, we do want to sort of think about the weapon as it relates uh, to the wave. And I do think... Um, that's a good set of weapons to kill the bosses because again, I have done arms dealer both range and melee or like I'm just Blasting through everything blowing everything up and then I get to the end and it's like oh here are your uh, you know gray uh, Torches, you know enjoy the uh, Elemental damage that you have been building around so that definitely happens. So uh, for the uh, viewers I'm happy to say uh, we will not run to that uh, is it just a gentle reminder? I'm making some rotator videos because I'm trying to do a little bit more of an analytical look, uh, look at the game. Doing some stuff with a face cam and a little bit more a detailed game mechanical commentary. I do this for fun um, to provide you guys with some interesting building uh, videos. Um, that said, you know, if you get uh, <laughs> that said, uh, if you don't mind supporting me by tossing a like and subscribe, that would just mean a lot. Like I said, just trying to do some cool kind of different stuff uh, with live commentary while I do these runs. If you could do that, I would be ever so grateful. Thank you, thank you. And I have built strong enough character that I can do my pitch and make a praying sign towards the camera and we don't have to worry about dying, um, which is a good thing, right? Like when you can shill, uh, shill that easily uh, in a difficult game, you've done something right. Uh, really like that 16% damage and uh, really like this melee damage. I mean, we are cranking. At this point, it's how much melee damage we get. Give me that lance, give me that sword, give me that knife. 
We got enough speed. I'll take the armor, right? Let's take it. Okay. Um, I don't think a dangerous mine is worth this point. We don't need any of these. You know, another jetpack. Um, I mean, I just don't don't think it matters. We'll take a ghost flint. We'll take an effective steroids. We'll take another sword. We'll take a knife, which I can combine. Again, let's just find the best weapons we can, right? We have enough. Uh, I don't think a lightning shiv is it. You know, I don't want to get too much range and, and slow down our, our uh, melee. Um, give me another sword. We'll combine knives. Give me another joust knife. I mean, look at that. You, you'd be happy with that in normal run. And here we are on uh, arms dealer really doing it. Uh, leather vest, cute monkey, why not? We got all this money, might as well spend it. That said, it is not traditionally a good strategy to hoard a lot of money like this for the last wave because the uh, inflation penalty becomes so steep. Uh, it just really catches up with you. And yeah, you know what? I will take, uh, let's go ahead and, and go lances and combine that to epic. Um, we will take that. And I'll take some more crit chance, giving us a whopping 72 crit chance. But let's not get greedy and take another one. And so you can see here, um, uh, I'm trying to decide if it's worth uh, combining. I'll just roll with the lances, but I feel really, really good about this. I'll buy this because why not? Uh, and again, really, really feel good about this uh, boss uh, opportunity. So normally I would not kill this guy first, but you know what? I feel so good about it. It's just like, let's just kill him, right? Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Six second boss kill on arms dealer. Have we done it? You ladies and gentlemen, we have. Both bosses, 11 seconds. I'd say that's a pretty good run. Um, but again, talking through some of the mechanics, you, know, you won't likely have a run that is quite this busted, but just think about these mechanics when you're playing arms dealer, and uh, I promise you, you will find much, much, much more success. But as always, really appreciate you watching, and if you have any comments, just let me know below. Thank you. Take care.